Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place, The Binding of Isaac, Rebirth, not Afterbirth, not quite yet, but we're due for an Eden run, and uh, we basically got two wins last time, I don't think it counts as two wins, but we got two wins, um, thanks to beating the chest twice, this time we have, uh, I actually think a decent damage stat, deck of cards, Pyro, not Pyromaniac, but Pyro, and there's our seed, 3QFG, YBKV, initial analysis, HP sucks, um, that's a problem, Spacebar item is mid-tier, maybe like a C+, plus, B-, minus, depending on what we get. Could be an A+, plus, depending on what we get, uh, or whether we replace it. Pyro, I think early, is awesome. Uh, I'm not the most enormous fan... You know what, this is a perfect opportunity to use the Empress. I'm not the most enormous fan of Pyro as a... As an item all the time, but super early, so we can bomb our way... We, let's put it this way, we're not going to be leaving any Tinted Rocks behind unless I just don't notice them, which is completely plausible. We have every available power to, to knock them open. I really like doing these Eden runs, because you get these uh, strange starts and you kind of have to evaluate them. You, it really speaks to the inner sports commentator inside of me, I think. Um, you know, I get to let my inner John Madden uh, fly. I'm going to stick with deck of cards for now. Shoot the Woop might be better, but uh, I think it is really a, a might situation. You know, there's there's no variance with Shoot the Woop. There's variance with uh, deck of cards. Deck of cards could be disproportionately great or disproportionately kind of meh. It's probably not going to be bad, so to speak, because it's never going to outright hurt us. But I got to be honest as well. I'm, I'm not going to be, you know, the Al Michaels on, on Monday Night Football. I'm going to be the, the John Madden. Um... John Madden is an easy target to make fun of because a lot of his analysis is very obvious. Uh, it would be a common complaint. However, you know, he he got the job and maintained the job because of his charisma. You know, he had a, a certain strength of character, an affability, a, a down-home every manness to him that uh, I think made him highly relatable. And uh, this is very dangerous now. And thus, um, I don't want to say desirable to watch because that's not really the words I'm looking for, but... Uh, you know, it, enjoyable to watch by a, a wide subset of people, and uh, I, I aspire to that as well. I can't believe there's no Spirit Heart for sale in here. That has just broken my heart, like, instantly. Uh, I think we'll shoot for the moon so that even if we miss, we'll land amongst the stars, and we'll probably try to get Blue Map. Which is, I mean, again, because we have Pyro, we will get Blue Map. It's just a matter of how many bombs it'll take to make it happen. If we got that pill and then got Converter, I might be pretty stoked. So there's Blue Map. But the pill would have to be Balls of Steel. Let's go check on this pill. Explosive Diarrhea. We will never re-enter that shop. At least not right now. Second Secret Room. Oh, really could have used two Spirit Arts there, not going to lie to you. Rather than fighting the boss right away, let's come through here and we'll uh, drop this off looking for the secret room, of course, which we will find because we can see it. And, um, well, let's hope Pyro allows us to take out the boss relatively easily because it seems like we're going to be a, a little bit behind the eight ball, to put it politely. We're going to be in a dangerous position. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to re-enter here. I did. I bought the bomb by accident. It's a relatively minor mistake considering how many bombs we have, but it does uh, not bode well for our poor donation machine. But I'm doing this so that I can buy the key. Maybe we could do something sneaky and go to our uh, go to our converter and use it with only one spirit heart. I really doubt it, but I think it's it's plausible. Maybe this is our get out of jail free card. It's a pin fight. The worst thing we could do here is drop a bomb. If we drop a bomb to fight Pin, we have made a terrible mistake. Because he could bump it into us, cause like an unpredictable explosion, and then we die. If he hits us once, I don't think we die. At least if it's a bullet, we don't die. Um, if it's his, him himself, we might die. But instead, again, get out of jail free card. Now we've actually got some red hearts. And I really like this run now that we've got a little bit of like refillable survivability. We also got an arcade right off the bat. And isn't that how it tends to go? Um... You know, when you want an arcade, can't get it. When you got one red heart and are, like, clinging to life, uh, the you get the arcade no problem. We get a two of hearts. Again, uh, although, actually, this is a little bit of a different situation because I very rarely find the two of hearts useful at all. Sometimes it can be incredibly useful, but uh, most of the time I just find it... Uh, I, I just pop it and walk away. Break the wrist, walk away. The small rock pickup is fantastic. I don't need to tell you from what perspective. From the damage perspective, I hope that's... Relatively obvious, just like food is good from a mm -mm, tastes good perspective, and also uh, the human race is, uh, you know, just flesh-eating monsters that, um, you know, require consuming the life force of other creatures to live. 
It's metal as hell, man. I'm not saying I'm above it. I'm I consume energy to live. It's pretty fucked up, right? Wouldn't it be sweet if, like we could just eat rocks? I'm not trying to say, I'm not anti-rock, like, hey, why won't somebody think of the rocks? I'm just saying. Well, yeah, I guess it's not that different. I'm trying to think of what. Wouldn't it be sweet if we could digest? You know, this is, a, I'm getting a little too far into it. This is the kind of shit that makes people say, man, NL, you're high as hell. I'm sincerely not even close to high as hell. I'm not even high at all. I might have a little bit of altered, just normal brain chemistry that causes these thoughts to come out of me that... I don't know, is maybe similar to uh, the effects of uh, cannabinoids or something like that. I don't know, honestly. I wouldn't know. However, um, I was what I was going to say is sometimes you think about it and it blows your mind how everything made on this earth is made from shit that was like basically already on the earth when we got here, right? Isn't that wild? It's like in Minecraft. I think I've told this, I've made this exact analogy before, but it's like in Minecraft. You know, everything you make in Minecraft is the byproduct of the raw materials that you find in Minecraft. But the human race, the, you know, the Earth is just like Minecraft to the extreme. It's like we landed here and it's like fucking trees, rocks, the occasional lightning strike. Uh, by the way, now we can go to fucking space. We took trees and rocks and, you know, plants and animals and, and all that good stuff. And we turned it into a fucking rocket that can go to and land on the moon. And then we can come back. That is insane. I, uh, we have to take it for precedent, unfortunately. I think I'll stick with the cards, though. I, I have a tendency, I think, to prefer the cards, even though they take longer to charge. Um, I know that's going to sound ridiculous, but it, it really does blow my mind sometimes to think about it and just be like, man. It's not like you gave two slices of bread and some ham and a slice of cheese and you're like, make me a sandwich. It's like, we took, we took jack shit. We made a rocket. That is something to be extremely proud of. I mean, we didn't really, probably most people watching this didn't have much of a direct role in that. Um, but, you know, keep fighting the good fight, man. That's an incredible story. That's uplifting as hell. Put that shit on a picture of the Crab Nebula. We turn shit into a rocket. And I'm not talking about a shit rocket, but that rocket is literally made out of rocks. And stuff we derive from rocks. It's incredible. They alive, damn it. It's a miracle. I kind of, I'm, I'm... Not being very kind to this donation machine, let's put it that way. Uh, Devil card does beat two of hearts. I'm not even going to play the, the blood bank. I don't think it's that necessary. We can play it once. Big deal. Um, take our devil card down to the next floor. It's a great run. I wish we'd gotten a better item from our deal with the devil, but it is a great run in spite of that. We still got 85 bombs. I didn't buy BOGO bombs, did I? I wanted to, but I didn't because I'm self-conscious about what I'm doing to the donation machine. So obviously we did not buy BOGO bombs because if we had, we would... Um, we would have gotten a double drop there instead of just a single drop. I still think that's pretty wild to think about. Maybe that's, you know, I make fun of people sometimes. I'm, I generally tend not to be a rude dude. And I'm, I'm self-conscious about making fun of people, honestly. Because, you know, I, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. But when people are like, yo, dog, the brain named itself. I'm always like, yeah, okay. The sooner you get over that realization, the sooner we can have a conversation that actually matters. Yo, what if your red is different than what I think red is, dog? Okay, well, that, you know, how's this gonna help us solve the crisis in the Middle East, you know? It's it's all good that you're uh, smoking weed after your 12th grade Halloween party or something like that, but, uh, you know, we got bigger fish to fry in the adult world right now. Um, but maybe that's that's the thing that I uh, can be made fun of for. Yo, NL! Joe, you know, your mom was made from fucking shit we found on the earth. Totally roasted you, fucking Neil Smoke the Grass Tyson. All right, we got uh, we got an eternal heart there. That's exciting. It's already doing wonders for us. This uh, this blue map. I don't really care if we have a slight inefficiency with our bombs here. We will uh, still be able to crack into these easily. What are we gonna do with a world card? It's kind of a weird situation. Speed down is pretty nasty. Tears up is good. I don't know. I, if I could trade, I'd probably just not. <laughs> I'd probably just prefer to have not had either of them. The tears up is awesome, especially if we get more speed. I'm going to use the devil card here. I'd rather kill it fast because our maneuverability is compromised a little bit. Like, a tears up is usually better than a speed down, unless we've never had any speed upgrades, is basically what I'm getting at. Plus, they're mutually like independent from one another, so it's not like it actually matters. Um, whether one is relevant to another one at any moment in time. Uh, we have basically 150 bombs now, so we might as well just go for all these. Well, two tiers upgrades. Now, that's a story. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Um, we'll explore a little bit more. It does suck we didn't get a deal with the devil. We didn't need one, but uh, 
Would have liked to have gotten one. Maybe we can find a Joker card. I can think of a couple of different ways in which that could happen. To be honest with you, I don't think we even care enough about a Magician card to use it. Uh, we'll probably buy Pandora's Box. And I think I'm going to do the uh, unthinkable and ignore BFF. This is kind of unfathomable for me to be in this situation. But uh, I think it's... Let's put it this way, it's a, it's a compromise. I want the item from this, and I hope it's a speed upgrade. It's it's HP, which is also fine. Um, but I don't want to get BFF just because I'm, I've taken like 60 cents out of the donation machine so far. And I'd like to be a little kinder to it, considering it's not my donation machine. Hopefully we'll get the chance to pay some of that money back before the, uh, before the end of the video today. Not that optimistic about that, but we'll see. I gotta admit, I think Lemon Mishap is probably a better item most of the time than uh, the deck of cards. But we use Lemon Mishap relatively recently. And the other thing about it is, as we learned in that episode, every enemy at the end of the game can fucking fly. So, it's not really that big of a deal, unfortunately, to have, uh, to have Lemon Mishap once you get past probably where we are right now. Hematomesis is uh, irrelevant, basically. I'm happy we at least got one Spirit Heart out of this. We've already lost half of, uh... Well, we we got two, but I've lost half of one. So I'm like, well, if I factor in getting hit maybe one more time, and then, um... You know, I must confess that my loneliness is killing me now. Don't you know I still believe that you will be here. Just give me a sign. Do we know this other pill? Oh, that's weird. <laughs> um, yeah, that's... I don't know how I should feel about that, that setup that just happened to us right there. Well, we have 76 keys. That's awesome. What is not maybe so awesome is the fact that we now have zero bombs. But I think we got pretty good value out of Pyro, if I'm being honest with you. And we do still have two of clubs. So if I can get maybe... Well, now I wish I bought BOGO bombs because we could have gotten a nice bomb supply so quickly. But uh, it's really unlikely we're going to need too many bombs. Hopefully we can get maybe five, four, five, six somewhere in there. Double it with two of clubs, and that's enough to kind of coast on for the rest of the game, depending on what you're using it for, of course. Okay. Let's take a look over here. We also just can't go to the secret room immediately, which kind of sucks. I didn't even think about, like, bomb scarcity. That was awesome. Now we can go to the secret room immediately. I didn't think about bomb scarcity at all until, uh, until just now. And this guy is a key beggar. So now, like, the whole value proposition is turned on its its side here. Of course we're going to play a key beggar. What's, even if it costs us 20% of our keys, that's no problem. We also just got a guppy's paw. I think I'll use it once. Still want to get red heart deals with the devil. We'll crack open a golden chest, no problem. We give us spirit hearts, bombs, and uh, more keys. This is the greatest key beggar of all time. It's going to slow us down, maybe make boss rush improbable, but uh, it's pretty good. So far, nonetheless, we're making money, we're making bombs, we're making speed down pills. Maybe a little bit less excited about that one. More bombs is great. Every bomb that he drops is two bombs, thanks to BOGO bombs, as long as we don't use it right away. And this pill is, are you a wizard? The perfect opportunity to burn off a little bit more time here. I was hoping that'd be a second guppy item, but more spirit hearts is also good. I have now given this guy almost 30 keys, though. I really doubt, unless we get Guppy's Tail, and even if we get Guppy's Tail, we're probably not going to be, um, probably not going to be using more than, like, 15, 20 keys over the rest of this run. Uh, that, unfortunately, doesn't help us that much, but it's still nice to have. It'll save us a few keys, all things considered. Where's my Guppy items, dog? I'm starting to get a little, a little displeased at this, um, at these payouts. That could swing it. Balls of Steel. Puberty. That's that's okay. We learned about Balls of Steel. Didn't really give us that much HP. I'm like, maybe we should just play this guy until he pays out, man. It's the first time I've ever seen a key beggar go on this long. I mean, part of that is because I'd never play them, but we might as well give this guy the, the time of day, you know? That's not our second guppy item. It's another speed down pill. If we get a PhD, this room will be, well, slightly more valuable. He's almost had 50 keys now. It's getting a little out of control. Uh, honestly, I think maybe he's taking some slight liberties. We're in the... You know when you're a kid and you're like, Oh, I'm trading... I'll trade you a pack of gum for your Snickers bar. This is like what your dad was doing that time. He's going down to fucking Wall Street making these big old deals. 
Hey, I'll give you a fucking 80 keys if you give me, uh, 20 cents, uh, two bombs, a guppy item, and, like, this is where we're doing some adult-ass trades here. I don't know how to feel about this. I think we go down to two keys. I really think we give this fucker 70... Oh, well, he killed himself. You... you... gosh darn jerk. You had to do it, didn't you? You had to blow yourself up! Always try to make a fool out of yourself! Always gotta be number one! I don't know what that was supposed to be. Um, like Catherine Hepburn, maybe? Why do I know Catherine Hepburn? Because I saw the aviator. That's... that's it, man. I'm not... I mean, she's a little, uh, before my time. How do I feel about that? I mean, we still have 10 keys with the golden keys. We still got enough keys. We basically picked up 16 bombs. Um, we picked up a good amount of money. We picked up a guppy item. P completely fucked ourselves out of boss rush. Let's, there's no doubt about that. Um, picked up some spirit hearts. Picked up some tears upgrades. We kind of got the best of both worlds going on that one. I don't know, man. It was a, it was a strange situation. I'm not going to say that it wasn't. We have the uh, enviable situation of having a... Hematomesis pill and knowing where the secret room is, but I'm also kind of thinking maybe we just use the hematomesis pill to get into the boss trap room. I guess we could use the hematom we could, you know, like why not both, right? We could use the hematomesis pill to get into the boss trap room and and also get the the value out of it. It's caves too. You're supposed to be out of here a minute and a half ago, so we're not going to be. That should probably be pretty clear. Um, let's keep moving here. We, this is going to be our long floor. You know, every run, many runs at least, have a floor that runs a little longer than you expect. Usually there's some, like, arcade kind of shenanigans going on. Not this time, but kind of similar, I suppose. So what what are you, what am I talking about with this hematomesis, um... Ooh, mini mush. Hematomesis, uh, second secret room type stuff? Well, here's the thing with the second secret room. It's not even a hematomesis uniqueness, because it also works with, a uh, portable slot, but... It, the... Hearts that drop in the second secret room will be whatever the type of hearts are that are already on the ground. Sounds confusing, perhaps. Um, what that means is that a second secret room has a couple of different archetypes. Lots of red hearts, a couple of black hearts, or one black heart, and uh, one eternal heart. If there's eternal hearts on the ground, and you use hematomesis, the red hearts that will drop will actually be... You guessed it. Um, they will be spirit hearts. I had to think about that for a second. We're back to 32 keys. Um... And uh, similarly, if there are eternal hearts on the ground, you'll get eternal hearts. So, um, this is what you do with the hematomesis pill to sometimes swing, like, uh, you know, two or three HP upgrades on a single floor. It's really what gives hematomesis uh, a lot of its value. And it's it's not really a lesser known trick, but it's a trick that, you know, sometimes it's easy to forget about after you've, uh, you know, maybe you've been playing the game for a while and looking for something to spice up your life. Consider giving your old friend hematomesis a try. So it doesn't always work out. <laughs> sometimes it works out fantastically, sometimes it doesn't. We're probably still going to go to that boss trap room. I just want to give ourselves a chance to get into um, the deal with the devil first and maybe trade some of our HP away. Which would allow us to take that other black card as well, even though that's, again, kind of not really that big of a deal. I was hoping he'd use Brimstone and I'd be able to bait a little time out of him. One of these days. He'll be dead. We're not doing that much damage. You know, small rock... Uh, the speed upgrade is very helpful here. Small Rock is our big damage up. Uh, I'll settle for a Guppy item. We didn't get one, but I would have settled for one. Instead, I'm going to settle for whatever we got, nonetheless. Because that is how that works. Hopefully, a deal with the devil on the next floor. Because, uh, a little, little disappointing. Can't deny that. But it's not like we're in a, a tough situation. We're in a great situation. You know, why don't we use uh, the Fool card here as well? I'm still kind of in my Catherine Hepburn voice. Um... You always gotta be a fool, Leonardo DiCaprio playing Howard Hughes. Hangman. Eh, that gives us something to take. Oh, another chance at Guppy. Redemption. Range down. It's not that bad. Hematomesis. Uh, you know what? We've, we've had our fun. Hematomesis is done. We're gonna fool card out. Now we can either have Hanged Man or Hematomesis. I'm gonna take Hanged Man this time. I wanna spread the love. Everybody gets a, a chance to... To do this. You could just pick up red hearts with it, but I, uh, it's not enough value, I think. What is that? Okay, so, the, you know, there's that phrase from Austin Powers. Your mom's like the village bicycle. Everybody gets a ride. Q, uh, laugh track. Ha ha, I get it. Village bicycle. Can we talk about what the fuck a village bicycle is temporarily? I've proposed that the idea of a village bicycle 
must be farcical in nature, because it makes very little sense to me. Let me explain why. Village bicycle. This implies that the entire village has one bicycle that they share. I can understand this. Um, but, where are they taking this bicycle? Only one person gets it at a time? Does it have to be rented out in advance? Can it be used in emergency situations? Is there admi an administer, perhaps, for this village bicycle? I hadn't really considered that until... Uh, you know what? I think we need some maneuverability here. If there is a village bicycle, how do they get the people that want to use the village bicycle to the location where the village bicycle is? The, it, you know, we're I'm assuming we're in the days, you know, prior to the invention of buses. If buses exist, why would you take a village bicycle? Is the bus not just a village bicycle, but with motors on it? I don't understand the concept of a village bicycle. Would you walk to where the village bicycle is? If so, you know, why, why not just walk to where the destination is? That would imply the destination has to be so far away that the use of a bicycle is prudent, but walking itself is just too exhausting. In which case, how long is this village bicycle being rented out for? Would it not be for hours at a time because of these long journeys? Presumably, not only do they have to travel a long way to get there, but then once they get there, they gotta do something there, at which point the bicycle can obviously not be used. Um, in this case, would like a, a village bicycle doesn't you just rent it out for like a day and then it's gone. It doesn't seem like a village bicycle. It's just like a bicycle for hire. Was the village bicycle monetized? Was it subsidized through taxpayer funding? If so, was there the ability to opt out if you say owned a horse and buggy? I don't want to be paying for somebody else's village bicycle and the maintenance thereof if I paid for my own horse and buggy. I'm just saying, the uh, Mike Myers. The concept of a village bicycle I find somewhat farcical in nature. I'm going to ignore that golden poop. Uh, it just it presents a lot of problems, is all I'm trying to say. I mean, I know that there are bicycles for rent in cities these days, but they're not the village bicycle. I think I would resent whoever took the bike out. I'd be like, oh, you know, Jimmy took the village bicycle out twice last week. I really needed to get groceries so my family didn't starve, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't because Jimmy was off seeing his... Uh, his girlfriend in, uh, you know, Arnhem. It's not fair. I, yes, okay, I assumed the village... Uh, great uh, damage there. I assumed the village bicycle was uh, in the Netherlands. I do associate the Netherlands with with uh, casual cycling. I had a friend... Tell me if this is true. I hate asking questions about the rest of the world, because then people go, Oh, NL, you're so ignorant. How did you not know this? How did you not... Look, everybody's got different, you know, perceptions and, and experiences with the world. I know things you don't know. You know things I don't know. Don't shame people for trying to engage in the currency exchange of knowledge. It's, it, you know, it makes everyone smarter. One of my friends was doing, uh, well, I think he, he doesn't live in Denmark anymore, but he was in Denmark for a program he is still doing. And he told me that there are just bicycles around, Then and yes, they have owners, but it's kind of like on a bicycle sharing program. I'm just going to pop that for basically no good reason. That basically you would go to a place, leave your bicycle outside, Someone might take it, but then you just take somebody else's bicycle, uh, and then it's just accepted. It's like a part of city life that, you know, you, you might come home with a different bicycle than you left with. I mean, obviously, you probably try to take your bicycle home. Um, is this actually the way it works? And I'm honestly not even, like, you know, I'm not even coming at it from a theft perspective. We live in an area, there's lots of, like, car crime and, um... You know, bike stealing in, in, in Vancouver. I mean, it's a city, North American city, so they get hawked for parts and stuff like that. But that's not even where I'm coming from. It's just like, it seems like a major inconvenience. Because what if, like, somebody was like, I'm going to start my bike journey today. I'm going to get my starter bike and then just keep free cycling it into more bikes. What if you get left out and you don't have a bike to ride home with? What happens? I guess that's when you take the village bicycle. I've answered my own question now. But also... I was like, hey, dude, who told you that? Because I think you might just be hanging out in Denmark as a foreigner stealing someone's bicycle every now and then accidentally just because yours got stolen. But he was adamant that um, it might not have been Denmark. I mean, yeah, people are going to be like, Denmark and the Netherlands are different things. Uh, that, why would I think that's a secret room? But uh, he was in both Denmark and the Netherlands. I can't remember which one it was, but he was, he was telling me. Maybe both, maybe neither, right, I guess? At least we... Got a little bit of extra value for that damage we took there. Uh, this will obviously not be our item room, but we might as well try it anyway. Way too slow for boss rush. This run is lacking a lot in the damage department right now. It's really like small rock carrying it. And then hopefully my um, 
just joyful commentary as well as I try to learn a little bit more about the world. If so, if they do just, you know, people just leave their bicycles expecting them to be borrowed uh, forever, like an umbrella or something like that, that's kind of cool. I gotta admit, there's there's something uh, about that that I find quite admirable as a, uh, you know, as a society. That you can just expect that, you know, there's like a pay it forward on bicycles in this city. That's kind of neat. But also, the, the North American in me is like, well, why don't you take your own fucking bicycle? Well, you know, someone took mine. Well, maybe they took yours because it's culturally acceptable to take anybody's bicycle if your bicycle gets taken. What if just, if your bicycle got stolen, you're the only one that's inconvenienced, and yeah, it sucks, but, you know, the rest of the village gets to keep their, uh, their freaking Hurleys or whatever. What, what, what do people ride these days? Huffies, that's it. You think that's a shoe in Um, you know, I... I don't know. It's still, to me, I don't want to go in too deep on this, because I'm pretty sure that my friend might have just been an accidental serial bicycle th thief. Uh, not uh, from any, not from a place of wanting to steal the bicycles, but actually from a place of having a little bit too much uh, naivete. But maybe I'm, maybe I'm incorrect. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I may be a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. Devil or High Priestess? I think, well, the Devil card is like more immediately useful on the mom fight. High Priestess, I think, is better for other bosses because I don't actually have to get my hands dirty. The thing is, they are mutually exclusive. We can't take, we can't use one against mom and the other one, you know, take it down unless we have a teleport card and starter deck right here. Possible, but um, probably unlikely. Celtic Cross is okay, but maybe not that big of a deal. I would really like a red candle or something now, honestly. Hey, we got a second chance to take BFF and we will do so. Uh, just in case, I'll buy this. You never know. Uh, I'll, I'll donate 11 cents. I want to keep one cent left for us to get into the arcade. I'm a little worried, honestly. Oh, okay, that's our donations done. I'm a little worried that we're actually going to lose this run, and I mean that sincerely. Um, I would also love some invincibility right here, but... Um, I'm a little worried we're going to lose this run. We are lacking a lot in the damage department. HP is okay for now, but that, you know, it, it can change pretty quickly. It can change at the drop of a hat. Do we want to buy magic fingers? Ah, it's like, it's okay. One bomb for two bombs. One bomb for a speed down pill. I mean, it's not that bad because we got a couple speed ups, but uh, it's not good. Come over this way. I'd like to use the death card. Like that would be something that we could get good value out of on this floor. Thank you, uh, weird Eve's bird foot trinket. Thank you very much. I should not have even come to this room. Should have just gone through the uh, the secret room and saved myself this kind of heartache here. Great use of a bomb. Just guided him like the perfect escort mission right around where I actually needed him to be. Not very shrewd maneuvering. That's okay. We'll spend a few bombs, make a little love, get down tonight. You know, Chubb's going to die anyway. He dislikes smoke. I, we had that rules card earlier. It taught me a great deal about myself. A lot about living and a little about love. Um, okay. Well, we are going to take the devil card. No. We're going to take high priestess. No. We're going to take on me. Take on me. Uh, take me on. Take on me. Uh, I'll be gone in a week or two. That's not true. I'll be right here, hopefully. Uh, we got nothing really happening in our boss trap room. You know what? We got a devil card. Let's use the devil card. I really hope we get a good deal with the devil. I would settle for Krampus. I hope it's not, but I would settle for Krampus. But we haven't really pulled much value in a long time here. Like, it's... It's not like we're dead already. But if we don't get probably one or two more, uh, you know, pretty marquee items, it's certainly not going to be easy. And, of course, you know, we have other opportunities to make it happen. Like, uh, when we get down to the chest, there's going to be guaranteed items there. All sorts of goodness as a result of that, but, uh, possible goodness as a result of that, at least. But, you know, for right now, we can only deal with, with the possibilities we have in front of us. We still have to survive three more fairly difficult floors before we can get down there. Mind you, we can focus on the positives. Decent amount of HP, small rock. A deal with the devil, even if it's Krampus, it's okay. It's Krampus, and you know what? I was going to say, you know what, even if it's Krampus' head, we'll probably take it, but uh, I think we will stick with the cards. They haven't really worked out that well for me, but uh, 
gosh darn it, they just gave me an Emperor card. So I'm going to roll with this. And we have map and blue map, which should allow us basically the same effect as the compass. We can do some process of elimination. We know our boss is going to be up there in the top left. Um, this is a shitty room, man. This is a shitty room. We got to make a break for it now and get uh, about 10 seconds of safety. Fucking awesome name for the next big boy band. They got a little bit of an edge, you know, because they don't always show up for first period. Sometimes they sleep in. Um, but uh, I like our situation. Why am I not using the Emperor card we just got? I'm saving it. Ah, uh, that is like super not worth it, but it got my hopes up because there was a pedestal. This is terrible. I can't believe we lived. Let's take the. Ah, I'll take the map up. Get a small rock. Or get a, a tinted rock. This is great. Um, I mean, it's not because they're annoying, but um, double blue Gertie Jr. gives us one spirit heart upon death. So. We will be able to grab a little bit more survivability here, and if we can just break even on this floor and then use the Emperor card on the Cathedral, or use the Emperor card on the Womb 2 even, or use it on the chest, probably not on the chest, but on the Cathedral is like the, the latest I could see myself saving it for, because it does take up a slot. Um, that's, that's really good. And we'll also be able to use whatever our other card is here. If it's another Emperor card, eh, it's a little shitty, but... I guess I just wouldn't use one Emperor card, because even if we used one, we'd still have to walk back to the other one by going through that room we skipped. Uh, so hopefully it's actually like a Joker card, just so we can hedge our bets. As of right now, I mean, I hope you can see the problem with this run. It's an exactly, like, definition, solid, average run. You play Mario in Mario Kart? I always, like, specialize, you know, I'm honestly a little bit more of a... Yoshi guy, but if Yoshi's unavailable and all the other like acceleration characters are gone for whatever reason, then I'm like a DK guy. I don't want the all-around cart, you know. Give me, um, give me the one with some advantages I can play off and some disadvantages I have to compensate for. This run is like, how's HP? Is okay. How's damage? Is okay. How's your spacebar item? Is okay. You know. We're at the safety school of Isaac runs right now. We got a fucking Joker card. That's incredible. Uh, we'll see if we get a deal with the devil. If we do get a deal with the devil, we're going to have to make a tough decision about whether we want to keep the emperor or go with the joker. That was just damage I should not have taken. But I'm still stoked. <laughs> still excited. There's also a tinted rock on here. So we'll just uh, wait till the end to get that. At first I was going to be like, we're going to get so much value out of this bomb. We're going to put this bomb down. It's going to work out awesome. No. We're going to wait. At least for a second here. Yeah, I put the bomb down, you teleport. Perfect. We get a spirit heart. That's okay. Where are my, um... Where are my angry, uh, Loki bombs? These are just normal red Loki bomb flies. Which are not bomb flies at all. Maybe half Loki only makes red ones? I don't know if that's, if that's true or false. Any minute now, this'll be... This'll be over. No deal with the devil, so our decision becomes very easy. Blood Clot is just an okay item. I've been hearing that a lot today. Take our Joker card. Red Chest Guppy items, man. That's the only thing. Yeah, one Guppy item. I mean, it's not great, but it's pretty okay. Like, it gives us something. Something we can strive for. It's our second Guppy item. Like the first one, it's not really that useful long term, unless it saves our life. In which case, thank you. Got to play six times if we can. Don't lose any spirit hearts. <laughs> we can also play the key beggar again, which is kind of surprising, would be the right word. This would be a great time to get ceremonial robes. This is one of the rare runs uh, lately. Let's not talk about that. One of the rare runs lately in which I've really had to kind of push all of our available advantages. That's why I'm, you know, losing HP is not only to get the whatever we're going to get from uh, this joker right here. I'm sorry, key beggar. He lived. Uh, but also, I want to get into that boss trap room. You never know if maybe we can get a, a red chest guppy item in there. Apparently, there's a pretty good chance to get a red chest guppy item from uh, this dude. He keeps dropping red chests for me. Better than dropping trout. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not not funny. It's just, it's just not funny. Okay, so we got some more invincibility here. Paid out with pills. That's pretty bad. Especially when the pill he gave us was Are You a Wizard? I'll play this guy until we get down to four. Because, honestly, I think he's one of our best chances now. Uh, and the Keybagger is really making a name for itself here, wouldn't you say? It's like, 
Giving us spirit hearts, it gave us one of our guppy items. Here's how much I respect that key beggar. I actually chose to take damage rather than kill the, the key beggar. That's how much I believed in, in the mission statement that he's pushing right now. We're down to six keys. Five keys. Four keys. I gotta try. One more payout, dog. One more payout. The dream is real. I could blow you up, but you know what? You do not deserve the indignity. The key beggar has proven its worth today, my friends. If you've got literally over 100 keys and you want a better chance of becoming Guppy, there you go. He can make it happen for you. Now this should be a one run, and we owe pretty much all of it to the key beggar. Ah. Have become a cat And I oh and I never felt this way before And I swear Meow 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 And I owe it all to you oh baby Okay we're gonna stop with that Could you pop up please thank you Probably try that on for size and we'll use our Emperor uh, card in the Cathedral, I guess. Been talking a lot today. Doing my Tom Waits impression again. I know this girl, she's been married so many times. She's got rice marks all over her face. Let's move along here. I worry. I mean, I, actually, I shouldn't say I worry. I'm interested to see if that's what I sound like when I get older. You know, you can look at there, you can watch some... Uh, some people with distinctive voices, like Michael Caine, for example, when they're younger, they've got these ebullient voices that are, um, you know, I don't want to say full of life, because that implies that they're devoid of it later, but they, they, what they lack in character, they make up for in clarity. Let's put it that way. Uh, and then as they get older, you know, the wear and the tear and the various, you know, changes that happen as the human body degrades on its inevitable journey from semen to soil, um, they, they manifest themselves in interesting ways in the, the vocal register of a lot of people. And I, I wonder what I'm going to sound like, because I'm kicking the shit out of my voice, like, all the time. I do, I try to maintain a good vocal health regimen. You, you, I mean, it's the kind of thing that people, like, sort of make fun of, but, you know, you're using your voice all day. It's a pretty uncommon thing. Most people lead a relatively quiet existence. Um, you know, some professions do speak a lot more than others, but, uh... You know, teachers and professors and stuff like that that might orate like six hours a day or something like that. But usually it's like ten minutes of lecture, do this worksheet, you know. Um, well, not if you're a professor. But anyway, I digress. I'm interested to see what I sound like. I mean, you can go back in my older episodes and uh, you, you'll note that I sound different. But it's not so much, at least I don't think it's as much of a... Of uh, like a physiological, morphological change as it is just like... I, I had a different attitude back then when I did videos. I was like, hey everybody, you know... Welcome back to Northern Line Plays Dark Souls. I was like, not, I was very conscious of not being animated for some reason. Like, I'm going to talk the way I really talk. I'm not going to give, like, a um, fucking be a PewDiePie clone or something like that, which is a ridiculous attitude to have. And this is actually more akin to how I talk than, than the way that I was doing back then. I just wasn't comfortable speaking my normal way, and as a result, I became kind of, you know, it sounds kind of like deliberate and, and maybe even a little bit forced, if I am being honest with you, which I am. Um,. But, uh, yeah, I think it's more of an attitude change than anything else. But I, in, when I'm, like, 70 years old or 55, 45, I might be like, bleh, 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 bleh. I don't know. Maybe, hopefully I'll sound like H. John Benjamin. Uh, we don't know what any of this stuff is, but we have four keys. Experimental treatment. HP up. We don't know about the rest. Rosary. Stigmata. Stigmata's okay. Teleport. Let's try it. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I have teleported you to the next room. Much appreciated. Well, that's, uh, that's how it goes, I guess. Uh, what about this one? Hanged Man. Let's teleport again. All right. Maybe slightly further this time. We do have 9 volts, so every time we uh, teleport, we get an immediate charge back. So we very quickly get uh, another teleport right after. This is not a good way of doing business. This is like, you gotta pick a number between 1 and 10. You got like a 90% chance of being closer to the boss room than you are right now. We just like, uh, 0. 0.4? 0. 0.4 is not a good guess if you're trying to guess a number out of 10. But Northern Line, you didn't say it had to be an integer. It could have been... It's an, always an integer, okay? 
Nobody likes when you be, uh, you so, oh, you mean an integer from 1 to 10? I thought you meant a natural number from... No, everybody knows it's integer. It's the unspoken integer. I mean, everybody's read the book, seen the movie, and I don't mean on vacation. And I don't mean on vacation. That's not really a good Michael Caine. I was chewing my words a little too much. All right. Let's do this. Blue Baby is going to be dead. We worked pretty hard to make this run work. I'm excited. Uh, the... I mean, more credit than uh, for myself should go to the, the Key Beggar, without a doubt. Just a great performance from the Key Beggar. There are two guppy items scraping uh, a win from what probably should have been a tougher win. If I'm being honest, it's not like we, we were salvaged from oblivion by a benevolent uh, benefactor or anything like that. Rather, it was, um, you know, our, our lives were tough and then were made easier. Well, we were not going to, you know, shit bricks and eat bubble gum. I don't know what that means, but I'm all out of bricks. And we're going to head down here. I'm going to actually hit the space bar. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.